Welcome to Redbeard and the Den of Tools. Howdy ho guys and gals, it's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the Den of Tools. And unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately today we are here to talk about the uh, the coming demise of a great old brand, and that is Porter Cable. Now as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words, but let's see how much video is worth, shall we? I did a walkthrough of our local Lowe's here. And I'm going to show you some video of one I saw, and I think at the end of that, you'll pretty much get most of the picture. But anyway, after that, sit tight. Then I'm also going to go over a brief history of Porter Cable, how they started, how they grew up, and what their future might or might not hold. Anyway, here we go. And here we are at one of my local Lowe's that, as you can see, has already done its transition. It's been purged. And as you can see, Craftsman is on full display, as well as some of these DeWalt uh, phone accessories. I actually picked up one of their USB-C cables. I'll be doing a long-term review on that, I'm getting back to you on that shortly to see how it, it handles it. Of course, USB-C is going to live up a little better than most. As you can see, they got full cabinets in stock a lot better than Sears is doing. Try and buy a cabinet at Sears. But as you can see now, Lowe's should just be changing their name to the Craftsman store. Um... I wish you could say I'm excited about it. I mean, I, new tools coming out, but everything I've seen so far from the Stanley Black & Decker uh, Craftsman hand tools has not been all that exciting. But here we are. Look at this. Two years, and this is the tool selection they have out. This is all the Craftsman 20-volt line, and, and they've practically pulled an entire cordless 20-volt battery system out of thin air look at this system this is this is a fully fledged completely you know robust tool system here all the way down to the, the portable uh miter saw by contrast here's cobalt this is lowe's house brand i will say pleased to see that that it is at least entrenched and holding its own against craftsmen Although they've been around for years, nowhere near the amount of stock and diversity you'll see in that Craftsman line. Although for an average homeowner, this might not be a bad choice to go with now that we know that they're going to stick around at least. And here we can see the golden boy uh, of the Stanley Black & Decker group, and that is DeWalt. And we got a fully fledged, completely you know robust and wide ranging line of professional grade tools here. You know, yeah, and the bear's down on their battery system and says, it, I, as I say, it's too expensive and whatnot, but there's no doubting that it's a substantial system here. Now, let's look at, was that one, two, three, four, five, count with me, six, seven, eight, nine. I believe I counted nine tools there. Nine. That That's less than, far less than Craftsman. That, uh, that's that's less than, than the Cobalt house brand. What about Black & Decker? We've got seven tools in the Black & Decker line. That's only two less than the Porter Cable. This is not a good sign for them. Now to add insult to injury, if you're wondering where all this stock went, if it's not on the shelves at Lowe's, just start checking out your local clearance or overstock website. One of my favorite is Woot.com. Woot.com is owned by Amazon, and it's a clearinghouse site that uh, where people, if they have too much stock or they're getting rid of stuff, they send it over there and it gets sold usually for bottom dollar. Anyway, as you can see here, this is current. I've seen this going on actually for months now, but this is current right now at Woot.com. You can get a 20-volt max four-tool combo kit for $160. That puts it in the same kind of pricing as Ryobi. You can even find them at Costco. Uh, they've got a two-piece drill kit. They've got a five-piece drill kit. It's going for two fifty dollars with the vacuum. And it's even showing up on Overstock.com. Now, if you really want the last nail in the coffin, we can go to their own website. This is Porter Cable's website. News and press releases. Their last press release was January 2nd, 2018, announcing new tile saws. The one before that was from November 7, 2017, where they expand the 20-volt max system with charging storage, bag, and radio. This is not a healthy ecosystem. This is not, <laughs> this is not a, uh, a growing and expanding tool system, I'm sorry to say. Well, anyway, there you go. It was pretty clear in the, uh, 
in the video how much of a footprint uh, Porter Cable is left, at least in their cordless, their 20 volt line. Uh, I ha I find it hard to believe that that Stanley Black and Decker can actually run four lines between the consumer grade, the prosumer grade, and the pro grade. There just really isn't room for both Porter Cable and Craftsman. One of them's got to go, and it's clear where their future interests lie. But let's talk about what Porter Cable was and how they got here. So Porter Cable was founded in 1906 in Syracuse, New York by, believe it or not, uh, two guys named Porter and a guy named Cable. Go figure. Uh, they invested about, I think it was like $2,300 or so in, uh, in some machine stuff to create a, an, a tool shop. And they did that until about 1914 when they actually decided to start making actual power tools. And the first thing that they invested in was lathes. It's funny because I find that back then a lot of these tool companies got started doing just this, making lathes. And, uh, and they did this, you know, for quite some time. In, uh, in 1926, they brought on a, a new chief engineer, Art uh, Emmons, I think is how you pronounce it. And he invented for them the first real, really portable electric belt sander. They called it, of course, the takeabout sander. This actually revolutionized a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of work that people on job sites and such could do. Because this was a sander, rather than having to take, the, you know, the, the workpiece to the tool, you could take the tool to the workpiece. And that was a big thing back then. Uh, he also invented the helical drive. Now, the helical drive is something that we find in almost all uh, circular saws these days. As opposed to, there are some that you still use the, uh, the worm drive, and there will be heated arguments over which one is better. But by and large, most circ saws these days use helical drive still. Now, Porter Cable this time was turning out a number of different tools. And I gotta say, if you go back and look at the old Porter Cable hand tools, there's just no doubt the fact uh, uh, these were heavy, solidly built tools that would last a lifetime. And, uh, and as they grew, they started expanding into the more consumer divisions, uh, approaching, you know, not just the professional, but the homeowners as well. Now, in 1960, the, the company was sold to Rockwell International. And uh, they made a bunch of changes, including, including phasing out, of all things, the Porter Cable name. They moved the company's uh, base of operations to Jacksonville, Tennessee, and they started off putting out a lower end of uh, power tools to compete with the consumer-driven Black & Decker stuff. And needless to say, that kind of tarnished the reputation of Porter Cable at that time. And, and, and Rockwell, to be honest. Uh, Rockwell used to... <laughs> we'll do a whole other thing on Rockwell, I guess. Now, in 81, they were bought by Pentair. Uh, in fact, they bought all of Rockwell's power tool group. Uh, including Porter Cable and Delta Machinery. And they worked really hard to get Porter Cable back into that professional level of tools. They even produced what some may argue as the first commercially available electrically powered random orbit sander. I'm pretty sure I had a sander look just like that back then. Anyway, moving on in 2004, yep, the big bad giant walked in. That is Stanley Black & Decker, and they scooped up Porter Cable along with everything else over there. And if you've been a fan of the channel, you know what the bear feels about what Stanley Black & Decker does to power tool companies. Anyway, let me know what you think. Tell the bear what, what you think the future is going to be. Right now, as far as power tool companies, Stanley Black & Decker has, at the low end, Black & Decker. Then they've got Porter Cable and Craftsman vying for that middle-of-the-road kind of stuff, the prosumer level. You've got DeWalt firmly entrenched in their pro level. There's no way they're going to give any space up there. They've invested too much. And they have Mac tools for the professional automotive line. Now, I don't see where else you could squeeze in another segment, another niche for Porter Cable to go. Now, am I saying that Porter Cable as a brand is going to die off? I, I don't think so. They're also invested in a lot of corded power tools. Uh, a lot of old woodworkers still like the Porter Cable routers. Uh, they did have quite a bit in the metalworking side. They had some decent grinders and stuff, but they've kind of gone away as well, and they've gone over to, to the, uh, the cordless stuff, and I think most of that, honestly, as far as the professional level, is going over to DeWalt, and I, I think, I think it's, you just got to say it, 
it, this is going to be the end of the consumer and mid-level uh, Porter Cable brand. And I think, honestly, even the professional level, because at some point I think they're going to transition them over to Craftsman as well. It's a sad day to see these great brands, you know, you know, go away like this. But to be honest, Porter Cable really died back in 2004 when they got bought by Stanley Black & Decker. They moved all the manufacturing out of the U.S. to China and, and abroad. And it just, it never was the same company after that. I guess it's, you know, much like the bear says about Sears, it's time to let them go. Time to, time to, you know, let them set sail to the far west and let them disappear into the sunset. Adios, Porter Cable. Anyway, that's all the bear has for you today. Why don't you go ahead and chomp the old like button down there. Just, ah, give it a chomp. Consider, <laughs> consider subscribing and ringing the bell. Don't forget to check out some of the bear merch. You know, links to all that good stuff you can find down below in the details or, or listed down below the video. Anyway, that's all the bear has for you today. You all take care. God bless. And as always, say it with me. Shine on.